Leave it to the ACC to do something absolutely asinine with no forward thinking or without really any reasoning. But if the season ended today, it would screw FSU big time. Now, they've set up these three-team pods that go into effect next year. And for some reason, they eliminated divisions in the schedule this year. Kind of a halfway point, I guess, of not a full-on new schedule format. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the situation, what to likely watch for, and what ultimately will probably happen if the worst-case scenario goes down. Now, first up, Florida State, UNC, and Louisville are all at the top of the ACC standings right now, and they're all undefeated. Now, the biggest issue with that is that none of them play each other. So in theory, they could each find themselves at the end of the season with a perfect conference record. They all three play Pitt, Duke, and Miami this year, and those are the three common opponents, meaning that the tiebreaker in this conference is going to come down to the fifth tiebreaker for a three-team conference, and that is the highest combined win percentage of conference opponents. Well, you can take Pitt and Miami and Duke out because they play each of those teams, And you're left with five remaining opponents. Now, Florida State's five remaining opponents are Clemson, Boston College, Wake, Virginia Tech, and Syracuse. Louisville's are Georgia Tech, Boston College, NC State, Virginia Tech, and Virginia. And then UNC has Q's, UVA, Georgia Tech, Clemson, and NC State. For Florida State's schedule, Wake, BC, and Q's aren't necessarily great on Florida State's side. Neither is VT, really, but hopefully Clemson will help pull that average percentage up. Louisville, having both of the Virginia schools and Boston College, will hurt them. Meanwhile, Georgia Tech and NC State are chances they have to increase the strength of their opponents' percentages. And then UNC has some of those same teams. UNC, Q's, Georgia Tech. But then probably the most strength that they have down the stretch is Clemson and NC State. I think Louisville's is probably the weakest, but at an ACC right now that is very, very unpredictable and very top-heavy, anything could happen. Where I do feel the most confident is that Clemson probably finishes with just two losses. And of all of the five common, uh, uncommon opponents that each team has, Clemson should be the best. But if you're Florida State... Do the Wakes, BCs, Virginia Techs, and Syracuses of the world drag you down? And that could be an issue. Syracuse was sitting there at 4-0 at one point, and they're now 0-2 in conference, so it doesn't look like they're going to be much help. Now, with every week that passes, we're going to have a clearer and clearer picture because we'll know two things. Number one, if Louisville, Florida State, or UNC have dropped a game, we'll also know what the percentages are for the opponents on each team's schedule. Now, Louisville is at Pitt this weekend, and Miami visits UNC while Florida State hosts Syracuse. Only the ACC could devise a system where this was a legitimate possibility. Now, I will tell you, I don't think this ends up being the way that things work themselves out. I don't think all three teams go undefeated. But if you look at each schedule and you look at the way that Louisville and UNC just played this weekend, there's certainly a possibility. I don't see Florida State dropping an ACC game. They would have to be shocked by uh, Wake Forest, Duke, Pittsburgh, or Syracuse, or give up the rivalry game to Miami, who, again, we clowned yesterday for their horrible coaching uh, that exists down there. I just don't think Miami's ready to take on serious opponents and win yet. We'll get a a good idea when they play North Carolina this weekend if they can rebound from having a terrible coach who blames his players for massive mistakes. Uh, But you look at Louisville's schedule, and they're going to be a favorite every game down the stretch. I would be shocked if North Carolina was not a favorite every game down the stretch. And then, of course, I, I think the same thing with Florida State. I think that we will be a favorite in every ACC going forward every ACC game going forward. Now, upsets happen, crazy things happen. You have to play rivalries in some of these games. And we'll have a better idea as the weeks go on what's realistic and what's not. So what happens? Without knowing a ton more about the games and how they're going to play out, I think 
that even if this went down, Florida State would still make the playoff due to who is on their schedule. But there's still yet so much to be determined. And I'll tell you who to root for in the ACC this weekend in just a moment. And maybe we'll do this as a weekly segment if you guys like this video. Uh, maybe I'll just do a post or something to give you guys kind of an idea of, hey, here's who you should root for this weekend to avoid this catastrophe. I think both Florida State is a 10-ish point favorite against either one of these teams, UNC or Louisville on a neutral field, maybe somewhere between 10 and 7. Um, so I'm not worried about going to the ACC championship. I just want to get there. Uh, also, I really like Charlotte, so I'd like to get to that city and get back because it's been a long time since 2014. We will do a tailgate if we're there. We're not doing a tailgate for UNC versus Louisville. But what if the Knolls are 12-0 and didn't make an ACC championship game? Would they get left out of the playoff? Honestly, I don't think so for a couple of reasons, maybe a few or several reasons. I think the SEC and the Big Ten are almost guaranteed one spot each, unless some real carnage happened in that Big Ten, which I just don't think there are enough teams for it to happen. But unless some real, real carnage happened there, I think the Big Ten gets a team in. And I think Georgia's proven this last week against Kentucky that when they're on, they can play like a great team. And I'd expect them to go in and continue to win out B12 and O going into the SEC championship game, and then either them or the team that potentially beats them gets in. So I think the SEC and Big Ten both get one spot. I don't know if anybody in the Pac 12 goes undefeated. I think that Oregon and Washington this weekend are going to be a ton of fun. I just don't think USC is all that good. Utah already has the, the one loss. I, I think that you're going to have a Pac-12 champion with one or two losses. Does that keep them out of the playoff? Does a, a Pac-12 champion at 12-1 and one get in over a 12-0 and 0 Florida State? I'm not sure. Maybe, but something to think about. And I kind of think the same thing for the Big 12. I don't know that Oklahoma wins out at this point. They're in the driver's seat after beating Texas this weekend. They're going to have a rematch. So what does the committee do with maybe two one-loss Pac-12 and um, – Big 12 champions, or if they have more than one loss, they kind of eliminate themselves. But what do they do with those two versus a 12-0 and Florida State who would have been a favorite against one of those other teams? Uh, I don't see Florida State getting left out in that scenario, but you know we'll, we'll see when things go down. I don't see them leaving the Knolls out on a technicality because the, of the ACC's incompetence, especially if we're ranked higher. My biggest worry would honestly be a 13-0 ACC team as opposed to a 12-1 Big 12 or 12-1 Pac-12 team. 13-0 uh, ACC team versus a 12-0 FSU. The College Football Playoff Committee does give a lot of credence to conference champions, and I think being undefeated in a conference champion would be trouble for the Knowles. We're going to see losses, though, and I'm not worried about there being five or six undefeated teams out there. We've legitimately never seen that in college football. Could we get three, maybe? I think that's possible. I think that has happened before. Um, but if FSU is one of them, I think they get in. I think if there are three undefeated teams and one of them is a 12-0 Florida State, they're in the playoff. The ACC ultimately failed us with this scheduling model, which of course they did. They put the cart before the horse and they combined uh, the pod idea without the division idea, but they reversed them. They said, we'll wait on the pods and we'll do the divisions this year. Um, nothing like being incompetent. Hopefully it doesn't impact us. Obviously, if there were divisions, Florida State would be leading theirs with Louisville tied, and that would be a matchup that happens this season. It would be settled on the field, and you wouldn't have it come down to tiebreakers. UNC would be leading theirs, obviously, in the driver's seat to be in Charlotte. So who should you cheer for this weekend? Well, obviously, Florida State, when Syracuse comes to town, Wake takes on Virginia Tech. Cheer for Wake Forest. We're the only of the three undefeated teams that play them. Wake winning helps our strength of schedule. You, Louisville plays Pitt. Obviously, you want to cheer for Pitt. None of this matters if that happens. That said, Pitt's terrible. It probably isn't going to happen, but Pitt winning would certainly settle all of this. North Carolina State at Duke. You want to cheer for Duke. We all play them, but because the other two teams play NC State this year, that hurts their strength of schedule and their conference opponent percentage if you cheer for Duke. Lastly, Miami at UNC is a tough one. Obviously, if Miami was to win, UNC would be out of the undefeated group. 
but we can never cheer for the Canes. So go Heels. If Miami does happen to win, though, there's your silver lining, and maybe you won't be so upset at watching a rival win. Someone asked me uh, if I had a percentage of this happening, if all three teams going undefeated. I think I'm under 10% for that, maybe even around 5%. I got asked this question a lot, especially after the weekend. I know there were some message board posts on it. I know Josh Pate talked about it on his show, but I figured I'd share my thoughts with you guys. Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments. Are you worried at all? Like I'm at like 5%, 10% on this. But as the weeks go on and teams stay undefeated, that percentage is going to rise. And after we see Louisville and UNC take on Miami this weekend, Louisville against Pitt and Florida State against Q's, I think that percentage is going to continue to go up. So maybe we'll do this as a series. Let me know if you liked it or not. Let me know if it's something you're thinking about, worried about, or just want to crap on the ACC for. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll have a a lot of content coming out this week as the Knolls take on Syracuse to try and get 6-0, and try and get their 12th win in a row under Mike Norvell. Thank you guys for tuning in. We love you. Go Knolls.